Hello, welcome back to Velocity Shay Lamoding. In this episode, I will be showing you how I created this kind of, uh, I call it like a randomness city. It's basically like a bunch of random objects instance that's actually uh, procedurally generated using SketchUp nodes. And then I also place it randomly. And then on top of that, I'm using uh, geometry nodes, as you might already can guess. This was actually inspired by Mr. Red Jam here. Uh, he made this kind of interesting, kind of complex um, structure. Or it's um, he went through the whole process, like including the hand modeling, preparing all the instance. Uh, the clever thing is actually he actually mentioned about the grid, and then he's very organized with all his reference geometry, and then how he scatter it um, using geometry nodes. So take a look at this video, um, very cool video. Um, so my one is a little bit more random. I think this can be improved a lot. Like if each panel can be turned into something that's more 3D, whether it's through displacement, but I'm thinking maybe through something like a adaptive polygon, like what tissue add-on is doing. Uh, this actually make me thinking a lot about the the whole procedural process so this is the the render with with the glow if i if i turn on the blue a little bit higher it's probably a little bit nicer but it's too bright so yeah all right the whole thing is still procedural i have 100 variations of these random shapes they look like a little bit like building or maybe the whole thing is like a spaceship this but the node is really really quite simple here i'm randomizing the i believe the position um and also the shapes of the box um and i also have this uh what is this the height okay this is the x the actual randomizations that I'm I'm using just extra region with a random mask. Um, so if we look back, there's actually a shader underneath. So the shader is slightly slightly all over the place. A little bit complicated, but it's actually simple. I'm using this again this JS placement. If we have a node that does like a two D displacement in the as good as JS placement, I think we can use that. For now, I'm just using the single texture. It goes into the roughness, metalness, with a little bit of color ramp. Um, I use this placement here, but it doesn't seem to work correctly. Maybe my setup was a little bit uh, wonky. So anyway, this is just a bunch of texture. Let's let me show you see I'm just separating some areas to get the, the light so if we are more in control of the light itself I actually have we have a bit of control over the light this is kind of nice I think this is basically just a translations of the texture map in the in the UV they are all a little bit random eh? but um, yeah the because of the UV is also a little bit random, it's procedurally generated inside SpareChop. But what's fascinating is how the whole thing um, put together using geometry nodes. So if I get rid of the, let me get rid of the, some of the randomness. So they are all basically like a bunch of objects in space in uh, some kind of point structure okay more or less like a cube here I can merge distance some of the points so some of them can disappear yeah just bunch of object and this is a point Output from Spare Talk, I believe. Yeah, 
So I'm out outputting just a vector p, just a bunch of points outputted into object called beta, while the other one is instancing this extruded region based on the box, which I called alpha, which is hidden under a collection called random. So if we select beta and if you take a look at the geometry nodes editor, it's just it's just this. All I did was randomizing the scale slightly for each one of the instance, and then I randomized the selection of objects from collection. It's really simple. So it generates this all these kind of weird shapes they're more or less quite uh, more or less quite convincing i guess it's not not too bad so if i go back to sphere chalk and decided okay i want to make changes you know instead of using box maybe i can use other other objects uh, you can do that of course you're not limited to box you can also i don't know let me try if I merge by distance this guy this box I just merge the box into different shapes okay sometimes doesn't like it okay maybe Maybe not a good idea. But if I ever want to make something that's a little bit more complicated than this, I can do that. Um, because we are using geometry nodes, uh, you see, I think this guy is just extruding it randomly based on the face shapes. And then so we have like 45 degree angle, etc. Which might be what you want, may, might be not, but uh, yeah, I, I was thinking maybe adaptive polygon can create more panel and randomize this a little bit further. So this is a little bit too simple, flat. It's a bit minimalistic, but I know the the JS placement is really adding some interest interesting shapes, but still not enough in three D. Sometimes sometimes you want to do more. Like so, we have this geometry nodes that's kind of scattering things. Maybe on top of this, you know, if you try, um, let's say if we just merge everything here together, you know, like a clump it, clumping it without merging the distance, we have this. This is already quite abstract enough. However, not enough details. So you need to go inside, like for each panel you want to replace it with, with real 3D. You can actually use the the method that we, we learned earlier in the, my previous video when I talk about fractal. You can fractalize this object. So use the same structure and just, just reapply the result. So this might be a little bit heavy, but I'm going to give it a try. So default cube and where's the default cube? Okay. Default cube. Another geometry nodes. And let's see, actually I, I will use this guy. So it's already scattering some objects. I want to recreate a new one. And use object info and just grab this guy this is gonna be the geometry that's gonna be scattering and distributing more objects and we have to make it smaller remember how we do it um, so I need to be careful here it's gonna be quite heavy Mm. 
before I do crazy things like plugging this guy transform and transform transform this 10 times Tran transform this guy 1 divided by 10 geometry point distribute so I'm gonna be using the surface of this guy generating a bunch of points Whoa. yeah this is just a bunch of points too crazy detail I'm just plugging into this guy so we are using the same um, instance objects but just plugging it into this guy I was hoping to get a smaller object oh I know why This should be plugged after the point instance. Hmm. It's getting heavy. Let's make this 0 0.05. Plug this after the point instance. And this should be 1 divided by 10. There you go. I mean, it's too, too much like a fractal. Like, I mean, it's too complex. But our eyes or our brain will look at it and okay. It's detailed enough. Not much randomization is happening. Maybe for smaller details, we need something that's with a, you know, with something that looks like pipes or smaller machine, but it generates like a, like a city, um, some kind of city or just crowds, you know, crowds of trinkets. So we can try using this method. Maybe this is like still too many. Okay, maybe, I don't know, all we need to do is just join geometry, original, and the one after. So, that's what I'm trying to do. Some, I think maybe some of the points needs to just disappear if they are too close or they are inside of the pre the original. Yeah, yeah, this is this is too much. So I'm adjusting this, just showing you the process. Something that I could have done uh, before I did like uh, adaptive polygons. We can use uh, something called Dream UV. So that each panel can have nice, uh, nicer UV that we can use to s scatter smaller objects. So in the end, it's it's really not like random scattering anymore. This is random, but it looks like fractal. It looks organic. But if it's like a human-made machines, we like to have some kind of order. So so snapping it might be a good idea using some kind of snapping so the position it goes into some kind of grid okay this one is done still I don't like too many smaller parts and then we are like oh I... that's too much so maybe density of 0 0.1 will do the job and then we just simply collapse everything 
maybe bake it into simpler object. Okay, this is a little bit better. This is more like what I was thinking. Larger objects instancing and smaller objects and we have this kind of look and then we are okay our brain is like okay cool this looks like uh, something from something futuristic from Akira movie let me try turning on the light and glow now it needs to calculate the shaders for each one of the instants It might be too much for my computer, but still looks kind of all right. So this is the city before we put in all the details. This one is after. Kind of nice, right? All right, so that's basically the whole process. Um, thanks to Red Jam for uh, nine for the idea, and this is uh, just me trying different things with a smaller part. In fact, if you if you take a look at works by uh, box cutter developer Master Shion and also Kushiro, they make they actually goes inside each every parts and makes all the details. Imagine if from this random collections we actually add those details, the result will be like completely blown your mind. So this is the whole ideas of procedural how each part can be. Can be worked by a single artist of course you cannot you can like make instance make like an instance setup to automate everything but in the end really what matters is that if someone goes in and add a little bit of um, their own work you know like a little bit of graffiti here graffiti there maybe a little bit of posters so the whole things become like a complete uh, works it's not like a computer computer making all the everything and then you're you're done but it's more interesting if someone can add a little bit of words you know like this is a building and eventually like maybe smaller people i mean can live in it just imagine this is like a city and human creatures or aliens can live in it and create their own unit house and put their own stuff so this is what it is, basically, like a Kowloon city, the old Kowloon city or you know, something. But yeah, anyway, I'll go too far. It's a, uh, it's just this stretch of nodes. This is just a basic default box subdivided, extruded randomly. And we got this. How magic, <laughs> how amazing, right? Thanks to geometry nodes and the nodes from Sphertalk, we can have something like this. All right, so there you go. Hopefully you find this useful. Let me know if you have anything to add because um, yeah, I am using JS pl placement uh, for the, the texture, just a single texture. And because this is pretty much random and if you look at it from this far, it looks kind of all right, but it can be improved. I know with the shader parts and also the displays I didn't use displacement properly here lighting if I can have like nice fog and better lighting maybe it even looks even looks nicer than this but yeah starting to hit some kind of limit because uh, with 3d and computer graphics you tend to add more details more and more details until your computer cannot handle it anymore look I'm using just a MacBook Pro without GPU so this is the speed so enough rambling I guess so hopefully you find this interesting let me know what you think and yeah I'll see you in the next video thank you bye